Hey guys, welcome to Northeast Tennessee Outdoors. I'm Eric. I thought I'd do a little review on turkey vests and what all goes into them uh, as far as what you need to carry. Now, again, this is my opinion and, and it's how I've got my turkey vest set up, but you know, maybe for people that, that's unsure of what all they need to carry, uh, hopefully this video helps you out. Um, first, you need to determine what type of hunt you're gonna be doing. If you're gonna be doing static setups, you know, field edges, um, where you set up decoys and things like that. You, know, you can get away with carrying chairs and decoys and more gear, because uh, you're gonna be sitting in that position for you know um, an extended period of time. I'm set up for run and gunning, and run, running and gunning means that you know I'm out walking and I may cover two or three miles or more you know, while I'm out hunting, and you know, I may get on top of a ridge and walk and call and hopefully striking a bird up and then going from there, you know, trying to get on him. So, you know, for me and my setup that I have here, you know, I'm set up to be as light as I can. And I just thought I'd do a review and show you what all I got in my vest. Um, by no means is this what you need to carry. This is just what I carry and, you know, you may go off of that. Um, first, you know, you need to look at vests. There's so many different companies out there that make vests and some are better than others, some are lighter, some are heavier. You know, some have kickstands. Um, I'm carrying a Tactical Tater 2, uh, which is made by Cabela's. Um, and the biggest thing, the, the reason I picked this one is it has the pockets where I need them. And the seat, which is super cushiony, is attached. And all you have to do is once you get where you're going, it just flips down. And then you know if you need to get up it, it just flips back up it's really easy to, to use and uh, I just like the way the seat works on it and it's super cushiony um, you know there's there's vests out there that's got magnets that hold seats in and things like that so you know vest is sort of personal preference I picked this one you know based on the seat and the way the pockets and everything are laid out um, now as far as what you're what you're going to need to carry you know like I said this is all personal uh, preference but you know, I carry you know several different friction calls. Friction calls, you know, like this. This is a David Holleran Twisted Sister call. Uh, this is a crystal call. It's super loud. Um, it's got a lot of good rasp. You know, you're able to reach out pretty good ways with these. And uh, and then I've got a on aluminum here. This is a Spur Ridge calls aluminum. Um, these typically are just as loud if not louder than the crystal calls uh, you know and if you notice all these are going to be different and then i have like a, a primos old betty old betsy uh, slate and you know the idea is, is you know this is for soft calling because slate typically runs soft you know a lot lower keys not quite as loud so you know this is for soft close in calling purrs clucks or that that thing you know these are for cuts and and you know, reaching out and trying to strike up a bird. When you carry friction calls, you also need you will need strikers. Uh, strikers. And if you notice, I've got several different types of strikers. Um, you know, that like this is a David Holleran op striker, flared tip striker, um, rosewood. I don't even know what that one is. And you know, and, and this is a spur ridge calls diamond wood striker. Um, you know, the idea is, is you know is strikers. Each striker is going to sound different on each call. So, you know, it may be trial and error to figure out which striker works best for each call, but, you know, that's why you carry so many different ones. Um, not one striker is going to sound the same on each call, so they're all different. Um, when you carry friction calls, you'll need scotch Brite to rough up the surfaces or sandpaper. Um, or they make this little tool here, Primos makes this tool, um, I think it's like 10 bucks. Um, it's got sandstone, sandpaper. Uh, it's got places you can store your scotch bright plus you can stick your uh, your striker in here and scr uh, sort of scruff up the the tip on your striker um, after that you know I've, I've carried some uh, mouth calls here you know and you know mouth calls are the same as friction calls they all sound different you know and I'm carrying you know zinc calls not inhales uh, Appalachian custom calls you know each mouth call you know they've got a different cut on the latex sound different so you know, I've got different ones for different scenarios uh, but I carry you know that's not even all of them 
you can see I've, you know, I've got a whole crap lot of mouth calls here. Uh, so, um, and then I'll also carry a box call. And you know, I'm, I'm not that great at box calls. Uh, I'll be the first to tell you. Um, matter of fact, this is the first year I've ever carried a box call in my vest. Uh, and, and I ended up buying this, this is a Primos hookup. Um, it's got some Kryptonian magnet here that's, I mean, it's crazy strong, but um, it holds the, the, the lid on the box at, with the right amount of pressure that you know, any idiot like me can run it. So, um, and it's got this, it comes with this little band here. It's a gobble band. You can work the top of the, the box to, uh, or the lid to get it a gobble sound. Uh, so, you know, as far as calls go, that's what I carry. You know, plenty of strikers, friction calls, box calls, plenty of mouth calls. And then on the, also carry, you know, a face mask, gloves. It's probably a good idea to go ahead and carry an extra set, you know, of gloves or face masks somewhere. You know, they don't weigh much. Uh, so, just in case you either lose them or, you know, maybe a buddy that you're hunting with left his at home or something like that. So it's always good to have an extra mask and a uh, set of gloves. And then, uh, you know, I'll carry you know, more scotch brought pads because I'm all the time losing them, which is why I bought that little tool. And then, uh, you know, sandpaper. And then, uh, you know, this one's got a little pocket over here that you can carry water. Um, I just got a bottle of water in here. And then, you know, I also carry a fan. You know, you never know. Maybe you could, uh, you know, fan one up with one of these. It's just, you know, it's nothing expensive. Um, that's about all I got in my vest, guys. It's like I said, it's, uh, it really determines, you know, what type of hunting you're going to be doing. If you're going to be doing static hunting, then you can carry chairs and decoys and, you know, a multitude of other things. But if you're running a gun like me, you know, I try to get by with the, with the least amount of weight as possible. You, know, you don't need to go to the woods and if you don't know you know if you're starting out you may go out and buy you know a bunch of different gear and you know you may be carrying 20 pounds to the woods and you really only need five so uh hope this helps um if y'all got any questions any suggestions like that feel free to send us a, a comment and we appreciate your time